Welcome to lecture 8.2, Linearization and Steady State Analysis. Let's start with an example from the previous lecture. Recall the competitive Lokta Volterra equation, where this models two species competing for a limited food supply. So here I've used actual numbers in place of the constants. So the first thing to do is to find the steady state solutions. So let me write that down. Oops, let's use a pen. So find the steady state solutions. And so to do that, we have to set x prime and y prime to zero. So that gives us two systems. So zero equals x times one minus x minus y. That's the first equation with x prime being zero. And the next one is zero equals y times 0.75 minus y minus 0.5x. So this is something that we can solve. So let's do it. So this first equation is 0. Well, let's, let's first consider the case when x is 0, because that's something that will make this first equation 0. So if x is 0, then either y is 0 or this whole thing is 0. 0.75 minus y minus 0.5x. So let me write that down. So if x is 0, then either y is 0 or this equation is 0. So let me write that as 0 0.75 minus y minus 0.5x equals 0. And of course, if x is 0, then 0.5x is 0. So this thing just reduces down to 0.75 minus y equaling 0, or in other words, y equals 0.75. Okay, next, y could be 0. So if, if y is 0, let's write that down, then the second equation is automatically 0. So the first equation is 0 if either x is 0 or if 1 minus x minus y is 0. So y being 0 implies x is 0 or 1 minus x minus y equals 0. And this, of course, happens if x equals 1 because y is 0. So 1 minus x has to be 0. Okay, so this... Um, or actually, there's, there's one more. If neither x nor y are 0, and that's possible, then both of these other expressions have to be 0. So 1 minus x minus y is 0, and 0.75 minus y minus 0.5x is 0. So let me do that up here. I'm going to say or 1 minus x minus y equals 0, and 0.75 minus y minus 0.5 x equals 0. And this system, it's, it's easy to see that x equals y equals 0.5 is a solution to that system. So again, this each of these equations is a product of two things, a variable like x times 1.x or 1 minus x minus y, and same thing down here. And one of those things has to be 0 for the equation to be 0. OK, so in all, we have four steady state solutions. We either have, the, let me write this down. So we have four steady state solutions. So the first one is, I'm, I'm going to write it like this, x star y star equals 0, 0. The next one is where we have 1, 0. So x is 1 and y is 0. We also have one where x is 0, y is 0.75. So x is 0, y is 0.75. And finally, we have this one where they, where they are both equal to Point five. Um, so this is point 0.5 and 
point five. Make sure that's a comma. Okay, so we have four solutions. So I'm just going to put quotes here. So I'm not saying that zero zero is equal to one zero. I'm just saying x star y star is equal to one zero. So each of these corresponds to a an actual physical situation that makes sense with the populations. This first one corresponds to the situation where both x and y are extinct. Their populations are zero. So let me write that down. This is both um, species are ex extinct. The second one happens when y is extinct, or it's called species 2 is extinct, and species 1 is at its equilibrium. Now, both of these up here, both of these species, are modeled by the logistic equation when the other one is absent. In other words, if, if you kill y off, right, set y to be 0, you get the logistic equation in x, and similarly, if you kill x off, you get a logistic equation in y. So this second steady state happens when species 2 is extinct. And then species 1 is at its natural carrying capacity, logistic carrying capacity. This third steady state happens when species... One is extinct, and species two is at its natural carrying capacity. And finally, this third steady state occurs when both species coexist. So this is the there is a natural steady state or equilibrium solution where both species can survive. So both species. Coexist, and it was not necessarily clear beforehand that there would be such a steady state. You know, it's not clear that that n one species is not always going to take over the other species, and there actually will be situations, as we will see later in the next lecture, of, at, as we change these constants for certain values of the constant, we might not get this fourth steady state equation. Okay, so that's the summary of the four steady states of this population growth model. And what we will do next is, well, this is a nonlinear system. We will look at each of these steady states separately, and we will linearize the system. So we will approximate it by a linear system, sort of like what we did in calculus when we approximate a curve using a tangent line. And then for each of those, we will analyze the stability of that linear system. Is it, is it a saddle? Is it a stable node or unstable node or so forth? And then we'll piece that together to, to try to get a big picture of the entire phase space. You may recall from one of the first lectures we had in this class, I think it was the second one, that an isocline of a differential equation was a line or a curve where the derivative is constant. So a special case of this is an isocline when the slope is zero, we call that a null cline. So when we have a system, we say that a null cline is a line or a curve where the derivative of either one of the functions is zero. So either x prime or y prime are zero. Let's take the example from the previous slide, and let's find the null clines. And we'll actually use this to find the steady state solutions as well. So first, let's find the x null clines. So when x prime is equal to zero. So this happens, well, when we set this equal to zero, we get that either x is zero or one minus x minus y is zero. So we, that's x equals zero or one minus x minus y equals zero. Next, let's find the y null cline. So where is y prime equal to zero? Well, that's going to happen either at y equals 0. So we set this equal to 0. We either get y being 0 or 0.75 minus y minus 0.5x being 0. So this or 0.75 minus y minus 0.5x. That should be a capital X, but it 
That's the only x we have here. So both of these things are curves in the, or all four of these, in the x, y plane, or in the phase space. So let, let's sketch that. So I'm going to sketch this here is x and this is y. So x equals 0. That is this vertical line right here. So this line right here is x equals 0. Actually, let me move that label because I'm somewhere else. How about down here? x, x equals 0. Now, y equals 0 is the horizontal line right here. So this is y equals 0. Now, 1 minus x minus y, that is the line right here that goes through 1 up here and 1 down there. So that is this straight line. I didn't draw it perfectly. Let's, let's try it again. Let's yeah. put a dot there and a dot there. And finally, this line here, 0.75 minus y, minus 0.5x, that has y-intercept 0.75, which is up here, and it has slope minus one-half. So it's going to look something. Let's see how I can, so I know it's going to go through there. So it's going to look something like this. So let me label these. This is 1 minus x minus y equals 0, and this here is 0.75 minus y minus 0.5x equals 0. So at all points on the, these blue lines, is x prime is 0. So in other words, the first species is, not, is stable, is at equilibrium. And along these red lines, the second species is at equilibrium. So the steady states are the intersections of the red lines and the blue lines. So there is one intersection. I didn't label this, but this is 0.75. There's another steady state, 0, 0. It's a red line with the blue line. There's another one. And finally, there's one right here. So of course, this is 1, 0. Down here, this is 0, 0. This is 0, 0.75. And this up here is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So here are the steady states that we, that we derived algebraically in the previous slide just by solving, these, or by solving this simultaneous equation. And here is the graphical interpretation of it. So start thinking about what the face portrait is going to be. So when we saw face portraits of linear systems, they were like saddles or nodes or something pretty basic. Now we have, here's the phase plane. And we have these four mystery steady states. And so, as it turns out, we're, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these steady states and linearize this system. In other words, approximate that system with a linear system in the neighborhood of these steady states. And then we're going to see near these steady states, are they saddles? Are they stable nodes or unstable nodes or something else? And then we're going to sort of piece things together from there. So to summarize this example so far, there are four steady states of the following system, and they are right here. Let's linearize this system at 0, 0. So that means is we're going to approximate this system with a linear system in the neighborhood of 0, 0. So to do that, let's multiply this thing out first. So this is x minus x squared minus x y and this one here is 0 0.75 y minus y squared minus 0.5 x y okay so when we linearize it we're going to say that if x and y are approximately 0, then these nonlinear terms like x squared, y squared, and xy 
are going to be approximately zero. They are negligible. So I'm, I'm going to cross these all out. I'm going to say this is approximately x, and this is approximately 0.75y. And this, of course, is if x and y are approximately zero. So in other words, near the point zero, zero, a linear approximation of this system is x prime equals x and y prime equals 0.75y, this system. And in matrix notation, this is just x prime y prime was 1, 0, 0, 0.75 times xy. Now it's easy to check that the eigenvalues, this is a diagonal matrix, you can read them right off. The, the diagonal entries are 1 and 0.75. So lambda 1 equals 0.7, sorry, lambda 1 is 1. Well, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to call lambda 1 1, and lambda 2, I'm going to say, is 0.75. And the corresponding eigenvectors are 1, 0, and 0, 1. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that if we have the face portrait like we drew before, let's call this x and let's call this y, then near the point 0, 0, we can draw the face portrait of this system just locally near here. So V1 is, is 1, 0. So this is V1. V2 is up here. So this, this is V2. And now the biggest eigenvalue is, is 1. 1 is bigger than 0.75. So my little trick, I like to put multiple arrows on the biggest eigenvector. And so now the solution curves are going to look like, are going to bend in this direction, toward in, in the direction of the dominant eigenvector. And so now the, remember the face portrait has these other steady states. It has a steady state up here. Um, it, this, this is 0.75, and it has one down here where, where, where this is 1. This is point. 7, 5, and it's got this one, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So what we know now is that locally, in around this neighborhood, this steady state is an unstable steady state. So if we start out with these two populations, which are very small but positive, then generally, qualitatively, the populations are going to be growing away from this steady state. Now, it's not clear what's going to happen. Are they going to be sucked into this steady state where, where species 1 dies out or this one where species 2 dies out? Or are those going to be unstable steady states and everything gets sucked in toward this middle state where species 1 and 2 coexist? So the next thing to do is to do the same thing we did here except at these other steady states. Though it's slightly more complicated because you can't just plug in 0, 0. You, you have to actually plug in. Um, you, have to, you have to do a change of variables that's a little more complicated when your entries here are not just 0, 0. So we'll do that next. So let's linearize this system at a non-zero critical point, x star and y star. The first step is to change variables. So as we've done before, let's let p be x minus x star and Q B Y minus Y star. So we are in some sense moving the origin from zero zero to the steady state point X star Y star. So think of these as like 0.5 and 0.5. Okay, so this, this means that um, X equals P plus X star and Y equals Q plus Y star. And we care about that because we are going to plug x and y in for each instance of x and y up here and write this whole thing in terms of p and q. Oh, so also notice, of course, that x prime equals p prime 
and y prime equals q prime. Okay, so now let's plug these things back in into here. So x prime, that's p prime equals p plus x. So again, we're going to be plugging this in for all of these x's. And we're going to be plugging this in for all of the y's. Okay, so p prime equals, so that, that's x prime is p prime. x is p prime plus x, so, or sorry, p plus x star said that wrong, p plus x star times 1 minus x, so 1 minus p minus x star, so 1 minus p minus x star minus y, so that's minus q minus y star, minus q minus y star, and then q prime so y prime is q prime, and then in y is q plus y star, and then 0.75 minus y, so that's minus, or that's q minus y prime, so minus, or y star, q minus y star, minus 0.5x, so minus half of that, so that is minus point five P minus point five X star. So here P is the distance. So think of P is the distance from X star. I should say the the X distance. So let me say the, the X distance and Q is the Y distance from y star. Okay, so, well, let me draw it up here. So th this is x and this is y, and this is our steady state. Then we are redefining the coordinate system. So this is p and this is q. So our steady state is now the origin with respect to p and q. Okay, so this system here, if we simplify it, in other words, if we multiply it out and simplify terms, um, well, it's a lot of work, so I'll just tell you what it is. So it is, it becomes p star equals 1 minus 2x star minus y star times p. So this is how many p's we have. Well, let's, let's check. How many p's do we have? We have p times 1. There we go. And we also have a p times minus x star, and then a minus p times x star. That's why we get a negative 2x star here. And now how many p times y stars do we have? Well, we have a p here and a minus y star here. So that's this term. So this is how many p's we have in here. And now how many q's do we have in here? We have minus q times x star. So we have minus x star q. And then we have a few terms involving p. Here's a p squared. Here's a p times q that we have. I'm just going to say plus nonlinear non -linear terms. And then similarly, we're going to have q star so let's see how many how many things do we um let's see how do I want to do this so how many p's do we have we have one half p times y star so that is so let's write this as how many p's so that is y star times negative 0.5. I didn't, I should have done that first. Let's see if I can erase. Yeah, let's write it like this. So negative 0.5 times y star. And then how many q's do we have? 
Let's see. So we have a whole bunch of Qs. Now we have Q times 0.75. We have Q times minus Y star and another minus Q times Y star. So that's Q 2. And then we also have a we should have a Q times a 0.5x. So, so how many Qs do we have? So let's see. So we have 0.75 minus 0.5x star minus 2y star. And then we have plus nonlinear terms out here. Again, I'm ignoring the Q squared, the P times Q, and things like that. Because what we're going to do is we're saying if we are near the steady state, then P and Q are small, so the nonlinear terms in P and Q are negligible. So again, P and Q are my variables here, X star and Y star. Those are just numbers. Those are like one half and one half, or one zero, or things like this. So in matrix form, what this is, is this is P prime, Q prime, equals 1 minus 2x star minus y star. This is a minus x star here. This is a minus 0.5 y star here and a 0.75 minus 2 y star minus 0.5 x star down here and then times p q and then plus we have nonlinear terms out here and I could easily write down what those nonlinear terms are things involving p times q or p times p but we don't really need to so this is what we're going to take away from this. And now for the remaining three steady states, recall those things are 1, 0, 0 0.75, and this 1 half, 1 half. We are going to plug in those values in for x star and y star, and we're going to get a very simple system. And then we are going to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and analyze that linear, analyze that linearization near that point. Here's a summary of what we just did in the previous term. Here is our system. Here's the linear part, and here's the nonlinear terms. So our steady states, here are four of them, and we already linearized close to 0, 0. So let's do these three next. So let's take x star y star to be 1, 0. So let's do that one next. So in that case, this system becomes the following. We get P star Q or P prime Q prime equals. So now, if this is if x star is one and y star is zero, then this term becomes negative one. So right, it's one minus negative or one minus two minus zero. So this is negative one. This term here is negative one. That is zero, and that is one quarter, I believe. Yes, it's 0.75 minus 0.5. So one negative, negative one, negative one, zero, 0.25 times P Q. So I've computed the eigenvalues and eigenvectors ahead of time. In this case, you could, the eigenvalues are on the diagonal because it's an upper triangular matrix. So we get that lambda one equals negative one. We get that lambda two equals 0.25, and we get that v1 is 1, 0. We get that v2 is 4, negative 5. That's something that Wolfram Alpha can tell you. you know, at this point, you don't need to do these by hand. You guys are adults, and you know how to do this. So if we were to plot this, what, then what this looks like is, let's see, how do I want to, how do I want to plot this? So I'm going to plot the, the PQ axes here in orange, and then the eigenvectors. So 1, 0 is, is this eigenvector, 
and the eigenvalue is inward. The eigenvalue is negative, so solutions go inward. And then 4, negative 5 looks like that. And the eigenvalue is positive, so now we have a, a saddle point. So the solutions are going to look like that. Okay. Let's do the next one. So x star y star is, so this is 0 and 0.75. So here, p prime q prime is point, I did these ahead of time, so I'll just tell you it's 0 0.25, 0 0.375, and negative 0.75. 0.75 times P and Q. So again, this is just what I get when I take this matrix and I plug in 0 in for X and 0.75 in for Y. So it's easy to check using, say, something like Wolfram Alpha, that the eigenvalues here are, so lambda 1 equals 0.25, lambda 2 equals negative 0.75, V1 is 8, 3, and V2 is 0, 1. So we also have a saddle here. So 0, 1 is this vector. The eigenvalue is negative. So it's negative 0.75. And then 8, negative 3. I don't know if the negative sign came out here, so I'll draw that again. 8, negative 3 is this vector and the eigenvalue is positive so this is outward like this so this is going to be a saddle the curves go sort of like this like that finally we have one more x star y star equals 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so here's the last steady state and here, P prime, Q prime equals negative 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 0.25, and negative 0.5. And then we have P and we have Q. And now the eigenvalues are a little more complicated. Lambda 1 is approximately negative 0.146. Again, this is, I just used a computer, like Wolf, Wolf from Alpha. I think that's probably one-seventh that we see there. Lambda 2, maybe. No, that's probably not, actually. Because it's the root of some polynomial. 0.854. Yeah, I don't know what that is. So lambda 1 is root 2 and negative 1. And lambda 2 is root 2 and positive 1. So here, this is, oh, let's, let's draw these, these vectors. So root 2 is like 1.4. So these vectors are going to be a little bit, oops, a little bit less steep than 45 degrees. And now one of these is going inward. Which one is it? Um, no, no, they're both going inward because both of the eigenvalues are negative. So they, they both everything's going inward. Which one of these is bigger? So this is bigger in magnitude. And so that corresponds to the one with the positive slope. So the one with the positive slope is going to have more arrows on it. So the curves bend in that direction. So it looks like it looks like this. Okay, so now let's see. Putting this together. What we have, and I'm trying to figure out where I can, I can draw this. So we have a, so this is, I don't have much room here. This is x, and this is y. And we have four steady states. Let's see, where. let me use red for this. So we have a steady state there. We have a steady state there. We have a steady state there. And we have a steady state about there. 
So if you recall, our, our, studies, our first steady state was, was at the origin, and things were, it, it was an outward node. It looked like that. Now, 1, 0, that's this steady state. So that's a saddle. So um, how, how, let's see, how do I want to draw this? So our curves are going inward here and outward there. I'm just going to draw it like that. This is also saddle up here, 0 0.75. So now we have curves going in there and out in that direction. And then this this middle point here is an inward node. So there we have things like everything going inward. So you can sort of see how this gets put together. So things are repelling away from zero. They're getting sucked into this e stable equilibrium, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then they're, they're, they're being swiped away from these, so these two saddles are unstable because if you start moving toward them in one direction, it spits out in the other direction. So this is here's the qualitative behavior that we have gotten from these face portraits. By linearization, we're able to say that locally, near these four steady states, this is roughly what the face portrait does. And now you can kind of picture that if you're starting out here, what's going to happen? Well, you, you, you're going to get sucked in that direction and sink in there. Or if you're up here, you're going to suck and sink in there. Or if you're here, you're going to go up and around and sink in there. Let me draw a bigger picture of what I was trying to do on the previous slide. So here we have, this is x and this is y. And then at 0.75, we have a, a steady state right there. At 0, 0, we have a steady state. At 1, 0, we have a steady state. And then at 1 half, 1 half, we have a steady state. So that's going to be like this. So solutions, we're going, how do I want to, let me use blue. So solutions were going in this direction. And then, so there's this sort of imaginary line that goes here where solutions are going to curve in that direction and up in this direction. And remember that there was a note that the solutions were going away from the origin like this. So solutions here are going to bend and get sucked in that way. And solutions here get bend and they get sucked in that way. You can also, you can find online software to plot these things. I think if you plug this system into Wolfram Alpha, it'll probably spit out something that looks like this. So a solution going this way is going to get sucked that way. And then we have things like this. So th this is a good idea. As gives you a. So here's what the face portrait looks like. We're really only concerned about the positive quadrant because that's where we have physical. Uh, it makes sense that we have positive populations of of species one and species two out here. It just doesn't make sense. So we have four equilibrium points or steady states. Um, and the only one of them is stable, and that's the one where they both coexist. Now, we will later see examples where this is unstable, and then these guys are going to be stable out here, which means that one of the populations will always win out over the other one. And you can probably come up with ecological examples where something like that will happen. Of course, it depends on the initial conditions. You have a lot more of this species or a lot more of that species to begin with. Here's another example. I'm not going to go through the same steps. Now here's a system where it's almost the same. It's just that these, these values are a little bit different than the previous one. So it's easy to check that going through the same steps, there are four steady state solutions. They're right here. And it, if you linearize them and you do what we did before and, and check the qualitative behavior at each or at, in the neighborhood of each steady state solution, then you get that 0, 0 is, is an out node just like the last case. However, 1, 0 in this case turns out to be an in node. So 
everything gets sucked into one zero. Zero four thirds is also an in node. And then one half and one half. Now this one is the saddle. So what this looks like is, well, let's see, so we have x here, we have y here, and we have 4 thirds up here. Let's make that a little bit cleaner to read, 4 thirds. We have 1 down here, so we have a steady state, a 1, 0, at 0, 0, at 0, 4 thirds, and then we have 1 at, again, at 1 half, 1 half, so that's going to be somewhere like here. So if you plot these things, now this is the saddle, and these things suck everything in. So if you do the same thing as we did before, you're going to get that line's going to bend this way. And then this being the saddle, things are going to repel. They come down, and so before things would come down and bend in toward this sink. But now things come and they bend and they go out that way. So everything sucks like that, and everything... These things come in like, like that. And then this is still an out node, so solutions go out, but now they bend either that way or they bend this way like that. Or they might bend this and like there, and this goes out that way, and that goes out that way. And so qualitatively, this is much different. Here, this is a steady state, one half, one half, but it is not a stable steady state. It's never going to actually reach that in reality. It's just like how a ball is never going to balance perfectly on top of a hill. Well, if it does and you nudge it, it's going to fall off the hill, and one of these species is going to win out. So what's going on here? So changing these parameters, change the null clines. So if you think about what the null clines are, x equals 0 is a null cline. Remember um, the previous, so x equals 0 was... Actually, I think I drew it like this. That was the null cline. Y equals zero is a null cline. The intersection, there's, there's one here. But then those other two null clines, these two lines, well, that line was the same. X minus, or one minus X minus Y, that was, oh, I'm using too many colors. That line was there. Um, well, that's not perfectly accurate, but forget that. Um, that that is the only, this is the line that is different. Only one of these null clines is different, and that changes everything. So that's what we'll look into next. Let's look at the general form of the Lokta Volterra equation that we saw in the previous lecture. So here is a here's a system like that where these constants can be anything. So as before, the x null cline. Oh shoot! Now I switched colors. Um, kind of random. So now I'm using red for the x null clines and blue for the y null clines. That's okay. You can deal. So the x null cline is always x equals zero, and then we have this other equation, and the y null clines are y equals zero, or this thing has to be zero as well. So let's plot this, and let's look at the different cases. So we are always going to have an x null cline uh, along y equals x equals zero is along the what is that, the y-axis, and a y-null cline, like this. And then there's four cases for how these lines can intersect. So one of them is where, let's see, so this x-null cline is going to look like that, and the y-null cline it might look like, but depending on these numbers, that point of intersection could be right here. Now let me use a it's colored. Say, so the, the x null cline, well, let me label this as x and label this as y. So the x null cline means that things are not changing in the x direction. So the, the hash marks are going to be vertical along the x null clients. And along the y null clients, things are not changing in the y direction, so they are staying horizontal. And so these hash marks are horizontal. And you can see that they, that they intersect. Well, they, they are always going to intersect right here. They're always going to intersect right there. And they're going to intersect here. This is, so I'm intersecting the red lines and the blue lines. But then this fourth one is over here. And that does not have a, a physical significance when you have two species. So in this case, 
you only actually have three steady states. So this, and so here, x, everything is going to get sucked toward this steady state. So things go down here, and then things go out. So this is an outward node, so things go out in this direction. So this happens when x out competes y. So that's this, this case right here. Let's look at another case. So the next case is when we have x. So we are always going to have, I switched my colors up, we are, we are always going to have the, these x and y null clients be along the axes. So we're always going to have this steady state here. But now we could have the, let's see how I want to do this. Hmm. Um, so I want to put the blue line on top now. So, so we could have the y null client and the x null client intersecting like this. And if we do this, now we have the, this steady state and we have this steady state and things are, and also we have the, the hash marks along the red line are vertical and the ones along the blue lines are horizontal. So what's going to happen if, if, if you start, say, so if you start here, then you're moving in this direction. So where you're going this way and you're going that way. So things will. So this is when y out. Actually, let me, let me write it up here so I'm going to have room for this. This is when y out competes x. This, this situation right here. Okay, so, so what else is there? Well, we could have the one that we saw earlier and then the previous example where we have the x null client like this and we have the y null client like this and now the, the steady states are going to be, there's going to be four of them and if we do the same analysis we did before, things go in this direction. And let me say a word about why I'm, I'm doing this error here. So, so if, if we are above, so this line right here, this line is where y prime is, this is the, null the y null line. So everything along this line is, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So everything along this, this line is where y prime equals zero. So everything above here is going to be where y prime is less than zero, and everything below here is when y prime is greater than zero. So curves that are above here are going downward, and curves that are down here are going upward. Similarly, if you look at this x null line here, that is going to be, everything along here is horizontal. So things that are, ab you can check that things that are above here are going to correspond to x prime being negative, and things that are below here are going to be x prime being positive. So that's why curves up here go down and left, and curves up here go up and, and right. So up here, things are, um, I do that right? Yeah. Okay, so um, what else is, is there? So there's one more where let's draw the axes like we have before. So you always have these two. And now you just, the only difference is that if these constants are a little bit different, then the blue one can be on top of the red. So you have the blue here and you have the red here. And now you have, or you have this, these three, four steady states, but things are a little bit different. And if you fill in these arrow, everything here goes down and left. Everything here goes up and right. And then everything that are that's between here, the difference is now it goes out there and it goes out that way. So this is, I don't know how to fit this in. Um, this example is 
coexist. And this is where we have um, one species um, wins or outcompetes the other. And which one does depends, so this, this one here depends on the initial condition. If you start out here, species one gonna, is going to win. If you start here, species two is going to win. And again, to summarize what we are doing, how we're getting the direction of these arrows is if you have a X null Klein, that means that everything is, the lines are vertical. So if you are under that, or you're to the left of that, X prime is positive. So things are going that way. And up here, X prime is negative. So you're going that way. And the other example is when you have the Y null clines. Now the lines are all horizontal. So when you are above this, you have y prime is negative and things are going down. And if you're below it, y prime is positive, things are going up. So that's how we're getting things like these diagonal lines and which directions they are going. So actually, I, I, I shouldn't say up here that this is actually curving like that. That's not quite possible. I think it's better to just draw straight lines like, like I had on most of these. Okay, so this is a summary for the, there are four possibilities based on these constants. Changing these constants is going to change the, sl the relative slopes of these two non-horizontal or vertical null clines, and the intersection can either be out here. Or I actually didn't draw the other one out here. It could be outside of this first quadrant, in which case we get three equilibrium points that are make sense biologically, or we have four equilibrium points and either it's stable or unstable as there. Okay, I want to conclude this with a word of warning. So when might linearization fail? So recall that when you take a, a two by two matrix, then the eigenvalue, the characteristic equation looks like this, where this, this is the trace and this is the determinant. And that determines the phase portrait, whether you have these in nodes or out nodes or saddles or, or these ellipses or in spirals or out spirals. And then you had these weird special cases, like along here, you had these, this is where the determinant was zero, you had these things where there was no bend at all. And then along here, you have these weird things that were sort of in between spirals and these nodes. Oh, this is supposed to go outward. And so yeah, this, this goes outward like that. And then over here, you get the same you get the same type of thing. It just it goes inward. So the take home message from here is: if you linearize at a point and you get something in one of these interior regions, like an in node or an out or in spiral or an out spiral or an out node or in node or a saddle, then you are good to go. Then you know that the nonlinear terms are indeed negligible, and your nonlinear system has this type of qualitative behavior at that fixed point as well. However, if you linearize and you get, and what you get is a phase portrait that corresponds to one of these threshold cases. So like up here, these are the stable ellipses like this. Then all bets are off. You don't know what, you cannot conclude what the behavior is like for the nonlinear system because if you're on the, teetering on this threshold, on this boundary, then the nonlinear terms are not negligible. They could cause you to move on either side of this boundary, to the left or the right. In other words, so if you linearize and you get a stable ellipse at a critical point, you do not know in the linear system, in the nonlinear system, whether that critical, po critical point really s is outward, is unstable, sorry, this is in, inward, is stable, whether it sucks inward, or whether it goes outward, whether it's unstable, because you, the nonlinear terms cannot be neglected there because you are on this little boundary. And tiny changes in the nonlinear terms, even though small they are, small they may be, 
could bump you on either side of this boundary. So just word of warning, the linearization, if you do it and you wind up with one of these guys with the determinant zero, one of the a repeated root or a purely imaginary um, eigenvalues, all bets are off. You don't know what to expect.